Hey guys, welcome back. It's currently three days until Christmas, so this is a very last minute recording. Frida has been animating a penguin lately, um, but I have some time to put together this tutorial. So let's go. I thought I was gonna show you how I parallax in After Effects. Parallaxing is a fairly simple thing, and personally, I love to implement it as often as I can, just because it adds so much depth in an otherwise really flat drawing. I basically parallax every shot that has some sort of camera movement to it, just to add a little extra spice. Okay, so in order to actually parallax the scene, we need to have a scene. I dug up some uh, old drawings from our archive, some of you might recognize. This one from a music video we did last year. Uh, this particular scene wouldn't be possible without parallaxing the layers. But the other one I got here is a great example of how much depth parallaxing adds to an image. Take a look at the before and after. So yeah, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so this is the scene that we are going to parallax. As you can see, I have the different elements in different layers. And what is important to remember when you're going to parallax a scene is to make sure that you have <laughs> drawings behind your drawings, if you know what I mean. Because if we move this layer around, I need to, you know, have a drawing behind it. You can, if you want to, just save this as a PSD file and load that directly into After Effects and just retain the layer sizes and that works fine. However, I like to export them as PNG images. It's just a preference. No reason, really. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to open up After Effects and we're going to create a new composition. My composition is 1920 times 800 pixels. It really doesn't matter. It can be whatever your drawing is. Hit OK. And then we are going to drag and drop all of my layers into here, into the project folder, and then drag and drop into my comp. Okay, while these are all selected, I'm just going to right click transform and fit to comp. That looks good. And now I'm just going to rearrange my <laughs> layer stack. So that's this is all in the correct place. Okay, there we go. Now in order to zoom, we're going to need a camera and a null object. So you can either go up here to layer new and then find your camera and your null object, or you can just stay down here, right click new, find your camera. It really doesn't matter. You can stay at the custom if you want to hit OK. And again, add a null object. Now we are going to pick whip the camera to the null object. So in order to zoom and make anything work, we're going to make the th layers into 3D layers instead. And that's just checking this box right here. If you can't find this box, just toggle switches down here and you should see it. Now that we have our camera connected to our null object, if we zoom, it's not looking good. You know, it's, uh, it's flat. <laughs> so what we're going to do is separate all of these as different planes. So we're going to hit the lock up here and then hit the blue comp one, new comp viewer. And now we're going to use this left one as our viewport to see what our final result actually looks like. And I'm going to use the right one to work in. So we're going to change the active camera into custom view one. Okay. So in order to navigate over here, we're going to hit the C 
on our keyboard and you can see that if you hit C multiple times you switch between different uh, tools. This is rotation and you hit C again you get you're moving around and you hit C again you can zoom. So I am staying at C and I toggle between C and V in order to actually move my layers and C again move the camera C move the layer yeah you get the point okay so what we're gonna do first of all is move our background layer way in the back however I am going to pick whip these two guys to my background because I want them to stay close and now I only have to move this one so we're gonna hit V on our keyboard stay over in this viewport and we're gonna drag this way back now you can see that the image is no longer filling the entire screen which isn't a big problem because we're just gonna hit s on our keyboard while this layer is selected that will bring up the scale and we're gonna scale it up to fit the screen again and now it looks like we haven't done anything right but if we now move the null object and we try to zoom woo, look at this the characters in the background is <laughs> no longer looking so flat however we're not done now we're going to move the characters back and i almost want them as close as the background and it, it might be hard to see now like oh how can i see what what i'm doing this is really difficult you can always change your custom view one into top which is maybe a bit easier to navigate because right now you can see this is our background layer right here and this is the two characters on the floor way back there and I want them to stay fairly close to the background because I don't want them to slide across the floor and I'm just going to scale them up by hitting S right about there and I'm just going to do this with all of my layers move it back to somewhere maybe like here and scale it up and this is just something you're gonna have to play with you know how much of a distance do you want the distance the greater the distance the greater the movement kind of I'm gonna move my foreground elements forward and then scale them down to fit the comp again and this foreground element the bottles I want them to be really close up here and then scale them down okay now if we move the camera now there's a lot of movement look all of a sudden now we're going through the bottles which is, to me is kind of like a cool thing I think that's kind of cool in order now to get these camera movements we need to put in some keyframes so this is actually where I want to end up so I'm just gonna put hit this stopwatch on position and I'm gonna drag it over to around six seconds maybe or maybe five I'm gonna do five and I want to start way in here maybe there we go now if we play this we are zooming but it's going super slow and not looking too good so but oh by the way cool thing you can see now that the camera over here at the right side you can see how the camera is moving through the layer so we really get a nice like overview over here what it actually looks like now we're kind of done with this we can close that i'm just going to unlock this one again now we need to add some easy ease to these keyframes so i'm just gonna select them keyframe assistant easy ease and then i'm gonna go into the graph editor right here and i'm gonna hit the separate dimensions i do this so that i can get these these handlebars right here so that i can adjust the graph as i want to i wanted to go super fast at the beginning and then super slow at the end in order to get that crash zoom or reverse crash zoom effect that is starting to look like something i think the bottles are coming in kind of late and we can fix that by again going into our 3d view and i'm gonna move both of my foreground elements a little closer to the back and then just 
scale it back up so it's not too small. There we go. Okay, let's see what this looks like. It's better. Now this is what I mean with you just had gonna have to play with these different layers and the the spacing. Okay, I think this is starting to look good. I think I actually want to move these back a bit too, maybe. There we go. Now to just put uh, the icing on top of the cake, isn't that a saying? <laughs> we are going to hit this button right here, which is the motion blur. Everything looks better with motion blur. That's just a rule. Stick with it. <laughs> now, let's take a look at what we got going here. Looks good, huh? Nice. So, yeah. That was it. I hope you guys found this useful uh, please let me know if there is something else that you guys would want me to talk about or go over uh, whether it is another after effects trick or just photoshop or illustration related in general um have a great day you guys and go make some art bye